destroyed, abandoned, forgotten. Since the 1966 riots, the Wright Dunbar Historic District has existed in various states of disarray with little being done about it. That is until now. If you walk down Third Street, you know, the Walk of Fame is there and you see all the great people that came before us and we're recognizing them. They changed the world and we can still do that. With all that history in mind, for the last 20 years, West Dayton property manager Erica Hubler has dedicated herself to improving a part of Dayton she says was once considered a lost cause. So this neighborhood was slated to be demolished. Then in the 90s during the urban renewal boom, Hubler's nonprofit focused on preservation called Wright Dunbar Inc. started buying up rundown buildings. Its roof had caved in, it was all the way into the basement and this all boarded up. That's what this whole neighborhood looked like uh, before. Hubler says they purchased as many buildings as they could and put roofs on them. But still, even though she estimates 10,000 visitors trek through the neighboring Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park each year, most, she says, do not stick around the area after their visit. So one of our main focuses was to bring amenities to the people who lived here and the people who work here, and of course the visitors to the National Park. Amenities such as Debbie Social, a food hall currently under construction on West 3rd Street. All of our restaurants are minority owned, female owned, or veteran owned, which was also very important. Most of them are from the area. It's a $2 million project. Hubler says her nonprofit and another development group called Dillon LLC are sharing most of the cost, with the city of Dayton also investing up to $250,000. Over the last few decades, uh, we spent over $40 million in that neighborhood, which is, and I, don't, I, I can't compare it because I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it might be the most of any neighborhood. <laughs> we would love to give priority to African Americans who want to come in and invest there. But, it, you know, we're a poor city. <laughs> And we, we're glad if anyone wants to come on board and be on our team. And me going into the food hall, it just, it makes perfect sense and it brings things kind of full circle for me right now. Dayton native and Delish Cafe owner Jasmine Brown will be a food hall vendor. I've always tried to move away from Dayton, but for some reason, God has kept me here. Jasmine says most of her friends and family are in Dayton, which is one reason she's decided to stay and be a part of its growth. My grandmother and my mom and all my aunts, they lived right down the street on Broadway. That's where they grew up. So to be so close to where my family grew up, you know, it's it it does something to you. While Jasmine is on board with the redevelopment plans for West Dayton, she says not everyone agrees. The chatter that initially I heard from some people and it was more so like, oh, well, this is a black neighborhood. Why is there a white company coming in and, you know, doing this? And I'm like, well, do you see anybody else of color that is coming over wanting to invest? Many in this neighborhood still see the 1966 riot scars. For Jasmine, she sees this new development as an opportunity to be part of a West Dayton black business owner's legacy. Because I always tell my kids, I was like, you know what, one day I'm going to have one of these stones out here with my name on it. Farika Hubler, it's about giving back to a community that gave her so much as she recovered from the damage the tornadoes did to her home. I know that a lot of things have happened to us. And, and people are like, why does this stuff keep happening? And I'm like, you have to learn a lesson. You know, it's not what's happening to us. It's what can we learn from this? We can come back from anything, but we have to do it together. The West 3rd Street Bridge that leads to downtown is expected to be completed in October with the Debbie Social Food Hall you see behind me expected to be open in December. Both projects coming together at the right time for a city that has seen so much destruction. For Dayton Gets Real, Candace Price, New Center 7.